Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, End of Year Analytics for Your CMO, presented by Elixir. My name is Laura, and I'll be your moderator today. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. We'll get this recording out to you shortly after the session. If you have questions, please use the chat feature in your control panel on the right anytime during the session, and we'll have a Q&A after the presentation. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce your speakers for today. Andrew Hall is president and founder of Elixir. He's a veteran in the software as a service space. He served in a wide range of positions at Right Now Technologies, which was acquired by Oracle, overseeing product messaging, web properties, marketing automation, events, and marketing analytics. Andrew currently leads a team of 45 plus Marketo experts at Elixir focused on best practice implementation and execution in the Marketo platform. Also with us today is Kate Goosen. Kate leads the business intelligence team here at Elixir. She has experience in sales operations and FP&A analyst roles, most recently with Aptis. With a decade plus of experience, Kate understands the sales process through every stage and more importantly knows how to report and advise based on the numbers. Andrew and Kate, thank you both for being here. And with that, I will hand it over to Andrew to begin. Andrew, please take it away. Well, thank you, Laura, and welcome everyone for joining us here the end of the year for one of the most important topics for us in the marketing community, which is uh, end of year reporting. And for many of you, you may be just getting your brain wrapped around your end of year reporting and you're thinking about it, which is great. Uh, for many of us, December and the first part of January is a good time to be collecting all the reporting around and analytics and insight around what is working and what is not. So one of the big questions for all of us as we will be uh, making our way through this content today is in the back of your mind, think about what worked and what did not for you in 2017. What defined your marketing success this year? For some of you, those successes may not be quantitative. Uh, we live in a world in marketing. I, I think one of the areas that makes marketing so enjoyable as a profession for all of us is the fact that we live in a non-quantifiable world, meaning those things around creative and content and the emotion around what we do as marketers. But there's also another half of our world, and increasingly it is a full half of our world, which is the quantitative aspect, knowing what is working and is what is not. So start thinking about what defined your success as a marketer this year and what defined your team's success as a marketer this year. And that leads into the next question to be thinking about here as we kick this off is, is your team tracking to meet their goals outlined for the year? Uh, many of you, as I talk with you throughout the year and over the years, have very lofty and aspirational goals that you go after, and I think that's wonderful. And tracking and see how close we get to those is an a admirable thing to do, and also then being able to uh, communicate back into your organization when you meet and exceed those goals as well. Another question to be uh, ruminating on here is, have you been reporting on those marketing successes this year? If for some reason you've made it past Q1, 2, and 3 without reporting, now's a good time to try to correct any of those roadblocks that are getting in the way and really focusing on how you can quantifiably get that data and that insight in front of the people who can help back you up. Uh, and being able to tell your marketing story internally within your organization. Uh, another one to think about is, is your marketing team and Marketo in alignment to deliver on those metrics? We spend a tremendous amount of time with our clients making sure that that marketing to sales or lead acquisition to close process is well-defined and articulated, and then it makes its way into Marketo, and for many of you, a Marketo Salesforce.com environment, and are all those metrics aligned? And then lastly, uh, before I hand it off to Kate to really dig into the, the meat of the CMO reporting analytics topic for today, is what changes have you made this year? You know, none of us live in a static world. In fact, all of you 
are constantly improving and adjusting what you're doing. So also thinking about all your metrics and analytics in uh, a environment where you need to adjust and change those and make sure that the system can be malleable for you as well. So thinking about what changed and taking that into account as you pull together your story and your analytics for the end of the year. So with that, and your, I know your mind is rapidly digesting all those uh, questions that I just posed in front of you. Uh, I just wanted to go ahead and pass it off to Kate and let her dig into what we believe are those top analytics reports and questions that you want to supply to your CMO. And if you happen to be the CMO, ask of your team to supply them to you so you can communicate internally to your executive team, to other stakeholders within your company. And for many of you, this information makes it all the way up to your board as well. So Kate, take it away. Great, thanks Andrew. So like Andrew said, we're gonna go through about five metrics that we wanna to cover today. And as you start to think about end of year reporting, you may be very, uh, or you may have already kind of come up with those uh, set number of reports that you have been reporting on maybe year after year. And so what we want is we want you to leave with some additional insights, but maybe after the five metrics we've covered, you can feel confident going into the new year that you have these as already metrics that you've outlined. And or if you're looking at these metrics and think, hey, I don't know if I can get all of these covered before the end of the year, but they're definitely a goal for me for next year. And we'll talk through that a little bit. So we're gonna cover five metrics. The first one being marketing's contribution to pipeline and revenue. So we're gonna talk about that one first. And then we're gonna go into a few other metrics um, with the buying cycle, with your life cycle. We're gonna talk about velocity, we're gonna talk about conversion rates, and then we're gonna get into some engagement metrics. With the last one talking about what key campaigns are really driving those deals. So with that, we'll start with the first one, which is marketing's contribution to pipeline and revenue. As we start to talk about each of these metrics, one of the key things that you're gonna see is a common theme. And with that, you're gonna see us talk about what's the ultimate goal, what report is actually going to be the report you use to get those metrics, and then what you should be doing today. So you might be asking the question of why am I pulling these reports today? I still have um, you know, another month that I'm still collecting data and I wanna get that information. And that's still something we want you to do at the end of the year is you're gonna pull those final reports, but it's really important now to start looking at all of these metrics to understand what starts to see some trends. And so that's what a common theme you're also gonna hear me say is that you may see some common things and trends that you're seeing now, but also you may start to see that there might be some roadblocks or other gaps in the process that we may wanna to try to cover um, you know, today versus waiting to cover those at the end of the year, maybe we can fix some of those so that the metrics are actually accurate. So starting with our first one, marketing's contribution to pipeline and revenue. So the main goal here is really to prove marketing's impact on pipeline and revenue. We really want to show what's that dollar amount that marketing has had the most impact on, as well as look at the percentage. So what's the percentage of total revenue? We want to look at both of those. And there's a, a lot of different ways to look at this, but the report that we would suggest pulling is really a first touch or multi-touch attribution report. I get a lot of questions on what is the report I should be looking at? Should I be looking at first touch or should I be looking at multi-touch? They both are really important. They just, they have different, they, they solve different problems essentially or they help answer two different questions. The first is really first touch which is identifying what sourcing activities have generated the most pipeline and revenue. So of these um, individuals that you've acquired versus, um, through your sourcing activities, what have gone on to become a customer? And then there's multi-touch. So multi-touch is really going to identify of those activities throughout that entire buying cycle what's had the most impact on pipeline and revenue. And so both are really important and we would suggest looking at both of those and they just answer two different questions. And it's just important to identify that they're just two different metrics, but very important on both. And we'll talk about multi-touch again later in um, this presentation because it's important to come back to understand a one 
one step more of what channel had the most impact or what program that you had running this year. And then what can you do today? So obviously build the reports today. If you already have them, that's great. But if you haven't even started to build those reports, start looking or spending some time building the reports and then start to identify any trends. Obviously, you'll wanna pull them again at the end of the year, but you wanna to start to see if you see any trends or misalignment. One of the key things you're also gonna to wanna to look at is not just only what impact uh, marketing has had on pipeline and revenue, but you also wanna see maybe those deals that you didn't have an impact on or didn't have any influence on, and maybe take a closer look at why, or maybe what could we have done differently? And so that's gonna be really key as you start to look at all of the data and all the numbers. And so with that, we're gonna to move to the next metric, which is really more along the lines of the buying cycle. So we'll start with velocity, and velocity really is you know, how long does it actually take for a new record, a new prospect to become a customer? We're going to be looking at the number of days. And so with this, again, you're going to see the same theme of we're going to identify the goal, the report, and then what you should be doing today. So the ultimate goal is really to shorten the buying cycle. And we could talk about this one for um, all day long about all the different initiatives that you can do to help with that. But one of the key things is really pulling a report today which is looking at the velocity of records between different stages in the life cycle. So maybe choose some key stages that you really want to focus on and understand how long is it actually taking for records to move through those stages. That's going to be really key. And it's important to start doing that today and looking at those key stages because you might identify that there's some extended transitions, meaning there's some longer time frames it's taking records to move through, and you want to identify what, what may be the cause of that or just be aware that that's going on. That's going to be key. And so that's, again, coming back to that same thing of you may find some roadblocks or you may find some, some gaps in the process, but it's better to understand what's going on now, identify it, as well as maybe even talk about, hey, what can we do next year to improve that? So that's looking at velocity. The other really key metric that we should be focused on is conversion rates. Again, this is definitely looking at your life cycle and the full buying cycle to understand you know, the number of records, really what does that look like and how are those records flowing through your life cycle. So with that, conversion rates are really, really important and they're, they're a really good indicator of how records are moving through the buying cycle. And so you may want to focus on, again, going back to velocity, those key stages, whether it's the marketing to sales handoff or um, sales ready stages that you really want to focus on. But that's going to be key when you're looking at conversion rates for, the, for this year. And again, at the end of the year, you're going to want to pull those numbers again and take a look to see if anything has changed. But right now, because you have a good amount of, of data that you can pull today, you can start to see what's may be happening. And so that report that you would want to pull is the conversion rates between each stage. And I say each stage because it's important to identify everything that's going on. When you are reporting at the end of the year, you may not want to show all of the stages and all of the details, and you may want to highlight those key areas, but just identifying what that looks like, those specific stages that you want to identify, that's going to be key for this report. As well as another key thing too is, you know, this might be the first time you have looked at your conversion rates. And this is a good time to say, okay, this is, this is our benchmark for the year. But next year we want to improve on that. And so you can leverage a lot of this data for what do we want to do next year. So a lot of times the, the reports are good when you're trying to build out your, you know, your 2018 plan as well as helping to make it more efficient. And so there are gonna be things that come from these reports, even now, even though we still have you know, maybe another month before the end of the year, you still wanna to start to identify what that might look like, especially at this time when you're starting to plan for next year. And so identify again, identify those key stages in the life cycle, make sure that you're highlighting any roadblocks in the process, Identify anything that you definitely want to bring up at the end of the year as something that you want to work towards as maybe a goal for next year. And with that, we're going to move to engagement metrics. So obviously, engagement metrics have a really big impact, not just only on 
maybe what worked this year or didn't work, but they also have a really big impact on your buying cycle. Obviously, we want to engage more records. We want to have more qualified buyers. And so through that is through different programs that you're running, and you want to make sure that you have those engagement metrics. So one of the main questions you should ask yourself as we talk about this next metric is really what works. But it's also important to understand what didn't work. Andrew mentioned that at the beginning, but it's, it's important to understand those key programs that or campaigns that actually worked really well. But sometimes it's better to even look at what didn't work and understand why. What can you do differently? Or maybe we shouldn't focus on that next year. We should maybe focus on what really had the most engagement. So the overall goal, which shouldn't be surprising to you, is really one to increase that engagement at every stage of the buying cycle. In a second, we're going to go to additional metric, which is really what's driving these, you know, individual to specific buying stages. And so one thing that is key here is you can pull an engagement metric or a, a program membership or an engagement report today. You can say, okay, of all of the initiatives I had this year, what had the most success? And that's, that's a very important metric. But I'm going to actually highlight that this metric is actually should be combined with that multi-touch report we first talked about. Because it's not only important to understand what had, what was most successful, but what actually happened after they engaged. Did they go on to become a customer? Um, we want to know that, hey, this specific program really helped um, influence pipeline and revenue. And so it's not just about measuring just the success of those programs, but then what actually happened after? Did those individuals go on to become a customer down the road? And so one of the key things is just identify those top programs right now with just looking at engagement. And one big thing just to keep, or just to think about as you start to pull these metrics, is not only what top programs, but also we want to understand how long is your um, buying cycle. So if you have some marketing initiatives or um, programs that you have running right now or just recently, we may not be able to see that success yet until 2018. So it's important not only just to consider everything you've done this year, but also that time. So when did you actually you know, have those programs running? Is that where you want to, you know, take a look at what actually you did at the beginning of the year, see how it's done. That's going to be really important when you're looking at all of these metrics. So first pull that report, identify those top programs, and then go back to that multi-touch report and then identify if that program really had an impact on pipeline and revenue. And that leads us to our other key metric, which is really what marketing initiatives drove the deals this year. So again, this is really gonna be important when you're looking at your sales cycle and how long that sales cycle is. You may wanna focus on those programs or initiatives you did at the beginning of the year to see how they're doing, but then also make a note that, hey, in 2018, I wanna come back and revisit these as well. But you just wanna give a good overview of how things are doing right now. And so when we start to look at what that overall goal is, we wanna identify that top marketing initiative, but we also wanna look at it from a perspective of how it's driving records to key milestones. And so this is a little bit different than just looking at overall engagement, but this is actually looking more into those key stages we talked about. When we talked about the velocity and conversion rates, we really talked about those key stages, whether it's sales ready stages or when marketing um, you know, hands off to sales, those specific stages in your life cycle, we wanna understand what marketing initiatives actually help to drive them to those key milestones. So there's a couple ways you can look at this, but the report you start want to start looking at is a last touch report. And you want to see what actually drove those records to those key milestones. What was the last thing that they engaged with? And you want to start to see if there's any sort of trends or if you maybe are shocked with some of the numbers or the data that you're seeing. But that's going to start to understand every step of that buying cycle. Not only, hey, these are really you know, important initiatives we're doing, they've had a high engagement, 
We also want to say that they actually help drive records to those key stages, and that's really important. So what can you do today? You can start identifying those potential buyers today. You can look at all of the different stages, and it's really important to just start tracking every step of that buying cycle. And a couple of things here. This is one where I think it's really important to continue to check back on these reports to understand every time you have a new initiative, how's it, how's it doing? But I think for the end of the year, when we're focusing on just how we're doing, you know, looking back, we want to be able to say what actually were the key drivers. And so that's going to be important when we're looking at the overall performance. So keep that in mind as you start to look through, you know, all of your initiatives this year. But I also want you to start to think about what are those key stages that we really want to report on, especially when you, you know, you're starting to build those reports, you want to identify what are those key stages in that buying cycle. And so we come to kind of the countdown for the end of the year. We've talked a lot about, you know, what types of reports, metrics, and what you can start to do today, but it's also just important to kind of go through a checklist. So we have a, an end of year checklist that we have um, that we kind of want to walk through today. For the first one, obviously, um, build your end of year report today. Obviously, we talked about that. Through each of the different metrics, start um, building those reports. Even if you're, it's the first time that you're looking at these numbers all year, it's still going to be really important to understand, hey, what am I seeing now? You still have another you know, month before you want to pull the final numbers, but you can start to see some trends. You also want to start proving the ROI of marketing efforts. So as you think back at what do we want to, um, you know, plan on doing in 2018, we really want to say, hey, what actually worked or didn't work? And that's going to be key when you are starting to look back to see what had the most impact on that pipeline and revenue. You want to identify roadblocks. And so as you start to build those reports, you may uncover some roadblocks, some gaps in the process. And I actually think that that's a really good time to say, hey, this is what we're seeing. We may not be able to fix them before the end of the year, but what we can do is we can say, hey, we want to plan for next year. And these are key initiatives that we want to do, whether it's something in the process or overcoming a roadblock that you see. This is a good time to say, you know, these are things that we really want to make big, big part of 2018. And it's better now to see this and identify it versus when you are done with the end of the year, you're looking at these reports, but you've already identified kind of what your next steps are or your plan for 2018. And you want to measure the effectiveness of the life cycle. We talked a lot about conversion rates, velocity, and just looking at the overall effectiveness of the life cycle, but this is a good time time to really understand how it's um, how it's working or not working or maybe things you may want to adjust. And then you want to really take a look at all of your marketing initiatives, your campaigns that are driving records to opportunities. You want to understand what that looks like. And again, it's really a good time to start to not only spend the time looking at the data, but also you have more time right now potentially than you would at the beginning of the year when you can really look back and say, okay, what actually really did work? What were those key campaigns that really drove records to specific opportunities and really take a little bit more time to review those data points? And then again, understanding the different marketing and sales touch points throughout the buying cycle. I think this is really important overall. And this is probably something that you should always be kind of checking back to see how things are going or the different, um, you know, different touch points throughout that buying cycle. This is going to be really important as you start to understand how long your, um, you know, how long it's taking records to get to specific buying uh, stages or records flowing through the life cycle. That's going to be really important, but it's also important to see the full picture of both marketing and sales touch points. And then again, I mean, Andrew brought this up at the very beginning, but outline what worked and didn't work. It's really important to, when you're reporting, to understand, hey, these are the key things that we want to continue or we want to focus on next year, but maybe we want to look a little bit more into what things didn't work. And that can be really important or could be a key indicator of things that you just hadn't thought about. And with that, we'll, we'll talk about building your next year plan. So, you know, the results 
and the findings can really help identify what you should focus on next year. That's one of the, the things I really enjoy about looking back at the, the numbers is understanding, hey, what can we do? Or like I mentioned, maybe this is the first time you're gonna pull these numbers. These can be a benchmark. And then next year, you can have a goal to you know, increase engagement or you know, shorten the buying cycle. Any of those things are gonna be really key. So it's, it's really important to review all the metrics, take a little bit more time to understand what's going on. Again, pull those final numbers at the end of the year, but then take the results and really use them to help plan for your next year. And so whether that's aligning marketing and sales um, or optimizing the buying cycle, all of those things are gonna come into play and they're gonna be really important. So you know, my big takeaway here is that start looking at the numbers, start seeing the trends, identify those roadblocks, identify any gaps in the process, but then make that a big uh, plan for next year or initiative that you want to say, hey, I want to improve that. Or this is where we are right now, and I want to get to, um, you know, this future state. And this is a good time to kind of outline what that would look like. So that's going to be key for you when you're starting to look at these, these reports. And so one of the other, uh, you know, main takeaways too is don't wait the full year to report. So what I mean by that is if you're starting to think about end of year reporting and maybe this is the first time you're, you're really trying to put a plan together for what you want to report on, it's important to not just wait until a year from now to come back to these reports and say, okay, how did this year go? But also to understand that, hey, at you know, a month or a quarter, we should be looking at you know, the data again. And so that's what this next slide is really showing you is if you want to report monthly, quarterly, um, it, it's a good time to identify, hey, what metrics do we really want to focus on on a monthly basis? You may not you know, want to present to the broader team every single month, but it's still important to identify what's happening. This is also going to help too when you're building out your initiatives for next year Maybe you're doing something new. You want to understand if it's working or not working. It's better to start to look at it on a, a monthly or quarterly basis versus waiting until the end of the year to really understand how it worked. And so that's what my, you know, my big takeaway on this slide is don't wait for another year to look at these again. So maybe have this be a good start to pull these reports and then in a month, in a quarter, pull them again, see how it's progressed, if anything needs to be changed, and then adjust but just based on those, on those numbers. So with that, um, that kind of covers the key metrics, what you know, our checklist is, as well as kind of where we would want you to start reporting. And so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up for questions. Thank you, Kate. Excellent, yeah, I have some great questions. Um, so one I'd like to start with, um, what would be a typical marketing stack needed to provide these reports? Can you get these just from Google? Do you need something like Marketo and Salesforce as well? Yeah, so essentially a lot of these metrics that we talked about, they take into account life cycle and they take into account attribution reporting. And so a couple different things. There's a lot of advanced reporting tools that you can leverage. And I think if you're in starting to look to see what kind of tool that you're interested in, it's really important to identify what you want to start reporting on. So if you want to start reporting on your life cycle, you want to definitely choose an advanced tool that's going to provide those reports. So to answer your question, yes, you're going to need an advanced tool to get those life cycle metrics, to get the attribution metrics. Um, you can't just use, I mean, you can get a lot of reporting out of Marketo and um, and Salesforce, but you may also need an, an advanced tool to get those additional metrics. Great, thank you. Um, you mentioned uh, misalignment and roadblocks throughout the presentation. Um, what if you don't have time to fix those issues before the end of the year? Yeah, so a couple of things. So I kind of mentioned it, but you know, First, just acknowledging that you found those roadblocks, those misalignments, as you're starting to pull those reports, that's gonna be key for your 2018 planning, because a lot of times you're gonna find that, hey, 
you're not going to be able to fix it before or fix some of those uh, misalignments or issues before the end of the year. You may not be able to, or you don't have enough time to do that. But what you can do is you can make that as part of your 2018 initiative. And then secondly, you know, do the best you can. You know, you may need to adjust your reports or maybe report on only a couple of the metrics that we were showing today. You don't want to report on inaccurate or inconsistent data, especially when you're starting to look at these numbers now. You want to make sure that you're pulling the most accurate data, but then have a goal of just making sure that next year start to report on those metrics. Um, and then have a plan, have a plan of what things you can change in the process or any roadblocks you have to, un, uh, you know, fix before, before you start to, you know, report next year. Excellent. Um, another question from the audience, um, building on the question from before about your marketing stack, um, some of the audience members would like to know, like, uh, what advanced tool uh, can you provide some names uh, or examples? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we've worked with a lot of advanced reporting tools, anything from, you know, Bright Funnel to Visible, um, Marketo's RCE. There's a lot of great reporting tools out there today. And so if you are looking to see or are looking to, um, to invest in an advanced reporting tool, just make sure that you're choosing the right one for your business. So, just making sure that you understand what metrics you want to pull on or report on today. Make sure that you you really do your research. But there's a, a lot of great reporting tools out there. So definitely do some research, but they're going to definitely be helpful, especially with a lot of the metrics we covered today. Great. Thanks, Kate. I'm going to switch gears a little bit here um, on uh, presenting these metrics. Um, what is the best way to present these reports to a CMO? Yeah, this is Andrew just jumping in on that. One common uh, thing I see is people try to take a report right out of the reporting tool. And some of the analytics tools, as Kate mentioned, whether it's Bright Funnel, Funnel Wise, Full Circle, there's a range, and she mentioned a few other ones as well. Wonderful tools, each have an area of the analytics that they really excel at. And some of them are truly great at, at presenting data and that may work for you but don't hesitate to take the data off those reports and put it into the PowerPoint or whatever that final exec delivery engine is because it's rarely log into this analytics tool and consume it natively right out of the tool that's usually the marketing operations or the director level person that's consuming it right out of the tool because they're very uh, in tune with what the reporting is telling them and what the nuances of how that tool presents the data, but you don't have that context when that uh, information gets spread outside of just the marketing organization or the people trained on, on the ins and outs of that analytics tool. So my recommendation having delivered to boards and CMOs and VPs and different teams is don't be afraid to, to go ahead and transport the data into the final delivery tool. Because a lot of times as marketers, we don't control that final tool, especially when you start getting the board level reports. It needs to be sent to them in a certain format, whether it's a, a fixed PDF or some other uh, kind of um, transportable file format because they need to consume the data ahead of a board meeting or an exec meeting. Um, so don't get too bent out of shape, I guess, is if you can't utilize the native reporting delivery and you have to transport it into Excel or PowerPoint or something, as long as the actual data is what you need and want to deliver, that's the key message. And, and again, don't get as uh, uh, worried if it's not, you know, the, the really high-end native graphic that may have come out of the tool. Again, if you can leverage it and your audience can consume it that way, it's great. But uh, that's not where I would spend your mental cycles, if, if that makes sense. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Um, you have a great question here. Um, our CMO is focused not only on marketing metrics, but also on sales metrics. So how do you align these metrics that we talked about today with sales? Yes, so 
essentially all the metrics we covered today really are not only marketing specific. So going back to our very first metric that we talked about, it's marketing's impact on pipeline and revenue. And, you know, essentially we're already identifying the impact marketing has had on those sales. And so that's going to be really key is not just reporting on the data, but also understanding that it's, it's bigger than just marketing and that it, it, marketing and sales should definitely be aligned. You know, for the velocity metrics, you want to highlight that the marketing's goal is to also speed up the sales cycle and they should be aligned with sales. And just going back to engagement metrics, you know, highlighting marketing initiatives that work um, are going to be really important, especially if they're increasing interest. And as a result, they're, they're really providing sales with a more qualified buyer. So essentially all of the metrics that we talked about today definitely are not just marketing specific, but definitely have an impact on sales and sales metrics. So, you know, adjusting how you may present the data, just aligning both marketing and sales, I think that's going to be really key when you're presenting these metrics. Excellent. Great. Thank you, Kate. Oh, let's see. We have looking at a couple more coming in here. Um, how do I report on my ABM initiatives alongside my traditional demand generation? Yeah, so we didn't really talk about um, specific initiatives, but this is a great question. So, you know, if you have a really big ABM initiative, it's definitely important to highlight those. So as we talked a lot about, for example, for example, the, you know, going back to, let's say the multi-touch attribution reports that, you know, what marketing has had an impact on revenue and sales. That's a really, really good point to identify, especially if you have a lot of ABM efforts. Take a look at what you know, those accounts that may have been your target accounts that you um, identified, you want to understand what really worked throughout the year and had a big impact on those, those specific opportunities closing. And so this is a really good time to say, hey, these are our initiatives, ABM specifically, how did they impact pipeline and revenue, as well as look at the overall, um, you know, as a whole, all of the initiatives you've done this year. In general, too, looking at just the different buying stages um, in your life cycle, you want to understand how the different initiatives that you've been running, how they've really um, impacted maybe speeding up the buying cycle. Or when you start to look at overall the deals that you've closed, you know, did you increase the, the deal size? So a lot of those things come into play. So I would, if I were to look at my initiatives, I would definitely make a big point of highlighting a lot of those ABM initiatives and then also, you know, maybe even creating a couple different slides that really highlight those metrics, but very specific on a lot of the ABM efforts that you've done this year. That's great. Thank you, Kate. Well, that is all the questions that we've had uh, come in today. I uh, definitely want to thank Andrew and Kate both for coming and presenting this um, important information as we're all looking to close out our year and um, go back and see what worked and what didn't. Um, I just want to thank everyone for attending this event. Like I said in the beginning, we'll go ahead and get the reporting out shortly so you can share with your team. And on behalf of everyone here at Elixir, we'd like to thank you and hope you have a great rest of your day.